Are you still struggle with mobile force responsive? Then this video will make it easier. Hello my friends, welcome to this video. Today I'm talking about the mobile force responsive design because many people believe that mobile first is complicated. If you are one of them, your perspective will be changed today. And I would love to cover this topic by creating this lovely project. In this project, we have some complicated layout and I'm going to explain you how to create this. How can you make a proper plan to make this project easily? So, before we start this project, we need to know some basic things. When you start designing from the mobile, you need to care about the wireframe or you can simply say project plan so that we don't miss any layout box. Basically, there are two types of box in a web page, layout box and the content box. Layout box is essentially a container that wraps HTML elements, where the content box are usually contains website content like titles or images. Make sense? All right. Let's look into the more practical ways how they are actually works. So, here is the project folder and I uploaded this folder in my Google Drive and share link in the description below. So make sure you downloaded this folder before starting the project. Okay, so open the project folder with VS Code and also open all file quickly html and also index.txt and also css and styleguide.md and javascript so let's initial the html file and here's hello world and Open the live server, you can go here, from here, or also you can go from here. Yes, it's work. Now, set the document title. Okay, here is the index.txt. All the uh, necessary text I shared in this txt file. Okay, save it here and also link the CSS file. Link CSS, assert CSS. This is the CSS file links. And after that, we need to link Google font. And here is the styleguide.md, which is markdown file. All the information I shared in this markdown. So Ctrl Shift P and markdown previewer. Click here. Okay, yes. I copy this one. And paste it. Okay, now we need to uh, link our JavaScript file. Custom just link script just. This is our JavaScript file. And after that, we need to link an icon. And this is the icon link. Okay, all right. Here's the our initial the HTML page, HTML file. So let's go into the CSS file because we need to some initialization. 
set custom property root for the first it will be colors all the colors I shared here copy and paste after that we need to uh, declare the or typography copy from here all the font size and the font family then here is the box shadow copy and paste border radius border radius and then the transition Okay, now research some default style, all the element, and they are before and after. Margin will be zero, and padding also zero. And box sizing should be border box. Ally. List style none and hyperlink and image and also span and button and ion icon. All these elements should be display block. And then hyperlink uh, should be color. Uh, color inherit the apparent color and text decoration should be none uh, IMG IMG height should be auto and then uh, button background color back sorry background uh, will be none because they have default background color and also border will be none of course font should be inherited from their parent and cursor pointer and for the ion icon ion icon pointer event none and ion icon stroke with ion icon stroke with otpx and html a font family This one var and font size will be ten px ten px sorry and scroll behavior will be smooth. Okay, for the body, uh, background color would be for white and color 
which is text color var dark electric blue dark electric blue and font size uh, will be 1.6 rem which is 16 px all right we initial all files let's move on to the project plan and here is our figma file and we are going to plan this project here as i said before when you make him mobile first responsive we need to care about the project plan right so before we start the project plan just note that for the mobile first responsive we need to plan from the larger screen or you can simply say the desktop screen because if we start from the mobile screen then we can't figure out some layout box for example let's look into the header from the mobile screen here is the header inside the header we have button on the left side and after that here is the logo and on the right side we have a layout box which contains two content box right here is the nav bar inside the nav bar we have a content box which is button and then here's layout box that contains all the nav links okay but we notice that the nav bar is outside of the header right but actually it isn't so what's the actual position let's check in the desktop screen okay here is the header in large screen uh, inside the header we have a layout box which is container and this is because we need to set maximum width in the large screen but here is the mobile screen we don't need to be we don't need to set the maximum width that's why we missed it right okay let's back into the large screen inside the container we have the logo then we have the nav bar and this is the actual position of the nav bar and we need to plan for this not for this one i hope you understand what i'm trying to say okay now we can start coding let's go back to the vs code and html so there is the header let's comment out for the header header to header which is uh, this one you can see this header so inside the header we have also container let's make it dot container inside the container we have extra element which is nav open button and this button is only in mobile screen so we need to notice that and let's plan for this button dot nav open btn inside the button there is the uh, icon I shared here and let's set the area label which is open menu so after that here's the logo a dot logo logo this one so a dot logo and inside the logo here is img select the path and width will be 
77 and height should be 20. Let's put it here. And after the logo, there is the nav bar, which is this one. You can see my screen, this one, nav bar. So let's declare nav dot nav bar. And inside the nav bar, we have extra element, which is nav close between the you can see here as yes, this one so let's uh, put in the nav bar in our code so button dot nav close btn and area label uh, will be close menu and then uh, select the Ion icon, paste it here. So after that, uh, here is the uh, navbar list, uh, which is this one. So it will be, and inside the navbar list, here also we have the navbar link. So let's go and ul dot navbar list. And inside the navbar list, always uh, li and a dot navbar link. Okay, put in all text here and copy. Okay, here is our nav bar, and you can see here beside the nav bar we have also layout layout box, uh, which is a header action, and there's structure this one. Uh, sorry, beside after the nav. Uh, the header action so uh, then inside the header action we have two content box uh, button the header action btn and let's put in here an icon from the txt file And also area level, here will be the area level, area level, add to cart. And then here will be the profile card, which is button.profilebtn, and also area label will be profile. And img dot img uh, select the path so width is hundred and height also hundred px and then old will be profile profile And then, so let's check what the next. Okay, uh, you can see in the mobile version we have the overlay. So let's put in here the so, overlay. Here we are. Here is the old structure of the header. So it's time to. Style this. 
This time I'm styling in the browser so you can see clearly what I'm doing. Okay, right click and inspect. Yes, here it is. Here we are going to style. Okay. Uh, let's display none, navbar and header, navbar and uh, overlay for the simplicity. So, navbar and sorry, dot overlay, dot overlay, which is this one. So, navbar and overlay, overlay, and display. None. Yes, this is more clear than before. All right. Let's put in here in our style header. Okay. So then uh, here is the header. Header. Uh, header padding block uh, will be 20px which is top to bottom padding and box shadow will be one shadow one for shadow one which is so let's set it copy and paste yes it works and copy this one And put it our code editor. So now select the container and add in inline, which is left to right padding, will be 15 px. Okay, this is global style for the container. That's why I'm using uh, in the uh, real style section. Okay. So now select the container inside the header. So first header, then container. That's mean container inside the header. Okay. So container inside the header will be display flex and align item center and gap will be 10 px. Okay, let's copy this one. And paste it here. So let's check what next. Now select the nav open btn and header action btn uh, because nav open btn and the header action btn uh, will be same style. Mm. So here is the nav action btn inside the header action. So it will be uh, font size uh, 25px and color will be dark electric blue which is variable dark electric blue and then transition will be var transition one let's copy this okay here we are Now give them hover effect. So is and also had a action between. Then when uh, Ashman is hover or focus, then color will be for eerie black. So let's check it. Yes, it's working. 
so then uh, header action yes this one header action so it will be display flex and align item center and gap will be 20 px and margin in line start first mean margin left will be auto okay let's copy this so now is uh, inside the profile btn uh we need to uh edit the img and give it style so img so this one and width should be 30 px yes this way and copy and paste Okay, it's time to style nav bar. So here is the nav bar. Then let's remove the display none. And then position will be fixed. Position fixed. And top zero. And also left zero background color will be white and and height 100 vh that's mean viewport height and maximum width will be 250 px and then width will be 100 percent and padding is 20 px and also z index should be 2 and then transition 0 0.25 as and for cubic out this is a variable and then visibly visibility will be hidden okay let's comment this one for now and then uh, give it uh, minus 250 px So then, uh, when navbar will be active, that's mean active class will be add in the navbar, then visibility will be visible. And transform translate x will be 250px. And transition duration will be 0.5s. Let's check it and class and active. So let's figure out what's the problem. Active class will be added in the nav bar, uh, but Okay, we need to uh, remove the style on our editor. Uh, here is this navbar. Let's remove from here. Okay, now let's check it. Navbar, it, uh, active. Yes, it's working. 
Yes. Okay. So, first of all, here's the nav close BTN. So, let's style this. And color will be for electric blue. And font size will be 22 px and margin block end ashman margin bottom will be 50 px let's take this from here and then inside the nav close btn uh, here's the ion icon Let's style this one. So, dot nav close BTN and ion icon stroke width will be 70px. Just like that. Take this. Okay. After that, we need to style our navbar link, which is this one. So, for this one, we can style font size for FS2. This is the variable, and color will be eerie black. And font weight will be for FW700 which is also a variable and padding block end 22px so let's take it from here okay so let's watch the next this is overlay and before we did a overlay display none do you remember and it's time to take over this uh, okay remove from here and that style uh, position will be fixed and top is zero and also left is zero and with 100% and height 100 VH then background color will be black and transition will be for transition one and then z index will be one and for the default uh, opacity should be zero and pointer events none Okay, let's take it. An overlay when will be active. And on the time opacity will be 0 0.75 and pointer events will be all. Okay, let's check it. Active, yes. Right. Okay. So now let's go to the JavaScript. And first of all, there is huge strict for the strict mode. And then let's comment here for the uh 
event listener function so add event on element this is event listener function and this function uh, let's name it add event on lm and then function and this function have three parameters on lm and the type and the callback that's mean lm that's mean element and then type will be uh, works for the event type and then here is the event handler so inside the function we need to uh, check a condition uh, which is uh, element is one or more than one so let's implement this lm the length uh, is greater than one then inside the function we need to uh, creating loop for working multiple element and for let i assign zero then i less than lm dot length then i plus plus uh, now lm index i dot add event listener listener then type and callback okay then uh, if elim element uh, less than one that means only one element uh, then else elim do add even listener and type and callback which is even handler okay that's it so here is the navbar functionalities we are doing here navbar toggle uh, then const navbar document dot query selector then here should be the data so let's take take it uh here yeah. data nav bar copy and paste it here remember i use data for the javascript selector so don't confuse for this then const toggle nav toggler nav toggler and it would be document dot query selector or then data nav toggler so set it here data nav toggler and copy and we need to add more For this one, they don't have toggler, and also it would be shit in the uh, overlay. Yes, and there is will be more uh, one more data for the overlay data overlay. Okay, so copy here and then cons overlay and document dot query selector yeah, let's copy this one okay here is the old selector of the nav bar so 
then create a function which is event handler toggle nav and function and inside the function there's active add active class on the navbar so navbar which is this one yes this one navbar dot class list dot toggle then active then also uh, active class should be on the overlay so let's copy this and change the overlay yes that's it so now let's uh, add event listener in the nav toggler so add event on lm which is the uh, machine that we are created before this one so then first parameter is nav toggler nav toggler and then second which is the type so it will be the click and then event handler which is the toggle function toggle nav yes this one toggle nav so let's check it yes let's walk in and also for the overlay yes successfully working okay now we are going to the next section so which is the product Uh, main and then article uh, then product commenting here so let's check it what's uh, in the figma and then here is the section um, okay then inside this section we have container so let's do it section dot product and also area label should be product and then the container which is the layout box so let's check it what's next so here is the slide box we have another layout box let's structure this the product slides So then inside the product slides, we have another layout box, which is contains all the slider item like this. Okay, let's do it. The slide slider banner. And inside the slider banner, figure dot product banner, there is all slider item. So then select the IMG, IMG dot IMG cover. Select the path and product one. And then width 600 and height will be also 600 and of course loading lazy loading lazy then put in here the old which is this one 
so now we have more three items slider items let's duplicate it and then now change the old source this two and three and then four okay after that let's check what next so then we have two content box which is button button dot slide btn and brave this is the extra class and area label is from here next image and inside this there is the ion icon just copy and paste it here and copy duplicate this one more time and change the class for the next next and change the also old oh, i did mistake here previous should be first and next will be the second let's change quickly previous will be here and next is this one okay let's move what's next next is the product content right which is this one now let's check it yes this one and inside the product content i mean product content is layout box and inside the layout box we have three content box so let's make it yes oh i did mistake again it will be the here so beside the product slides here is the product content which is layout box and inside the layout box we have uh three content box first one will be the p dot product subtitle and text is here and then second will be h1 dot h1 dot product title and then product p dot product text okay so let's check what next so then we have another layout box which is this one so inside this one we have three content box so let's make it dot wrapper let's name it wrapper and then span dot tries okay and after that span dot badge and then 
del do del So let's check what next. So beside the this layout box we have another layout box which is this one wrapping two button and then one is here and another is this one. Let's make it quickly. So dot btn group and then dot counter wrapper this is layout box okay and then card btn button dot card btn So inside the counter wrapper, we have three content box, which is this one and this one. Okay. So button the counter btn. Inside this one, we have ion icon. Let's copy and then only span span inside this span. Let's put this one, it will be the one. So let's change it one and then again we have one button button the counter btn. So let's copy and paste. So let's check what is in the card BTN. So first is the icon and second will second one is the text. Let's make it. So first is an icon, which is this one. And second is span dot span. And then put the text here. Yes, that's great. You successfully create this structure. Okay, let's check our live server. Everything is okay. Yes. This is all slide item. And here is next and prev button and also all the text is available here okay let's go to the style and select the product slide main and inside the product section after the container this is the product slide and position will be relative and margin in line which is left right margin should be minus 15 px and then overflow is hidden okay let's copy from here and paste it after the comment okay after that here is let's select the slider banner and display will be flex which is this one yes this one let's check it this one this is slider banner display will be flex so that every every item will be side by side and then transition var transition to this is long transition 
which is the variable transition to and take it from here and then product banner yes main width minimum width will be 100 percent and max height will be 300 px which is fixed size and copy from here and paste it okay then here will be the slide btn okay let's style the img which is class with the img cover will be with 100 percent and height 100 percent and of course object fit cover This is the global style, so it should be in the reused style. And then there will be the slide BTN. Select the slide BTN. And position is absolute top 50% and transform translate y minus 50% for the centering and background color is white and then color will be eerie black for eerie black and padding is 12 px and then border radius is radius circle which is 50 percent let's take it from here so then select the slide btn prev which is slide btn dot prev that means slide btn plus with prev which is this one and it will be the left 15 px 15 px and then for the next slide btn dot next then here will be the right 15 px all right guys let's copy from here okay then when slide btn class with disable right slide btn dot disable disabled then color var dark electric blue and opacity 0 0.8 and then pointer events none Let's check it. Dot disabled. This is the class. And after the adding the class, this style. Here will be the style. Okay, let's take it from here. Let's 
after that select the product content which is this one and padding block which is top to bottom padding first top will be the 24 px and bottom will be 50 px and then adding inline which is left to right padding should be 8 px all right let's take it from here so after that uh, inside the product content let's select the product subtitle so first dot product content so color will be var c green c green and font size will be fs4 var fs4 and font weight will be for fw700 and then text transform should be uppercase so later spacing later spacing should be 1px all right here is the style and copy from here and then let's select the product title which is this one so dot product content inside the product content the product title which will be the color of our very black very black and font size will be for fs1 and then mod line height will be 1.1 .1. and then margin block as mean top to bottom margin top will be the 12 px and bottom will be 18 px okay that's great copy and paste so after that i select the product text so product content product content inside the product content product text will be font size of our fs3 and line height should be for line height should be 1.7 okay let's take then product content there is be the wrapper which is layout box let's check which one so here's this one okay this one so let's select then the product content and then wrapper display will be flex display flex and align item center line item center and gap should be 15 px and then margin block which is top to bottom margin for the top will be 30 px and for the bottom 25 px all right, let's take it here. All right. And then I select the price. So product content and price. Color var eerie black. 
and font size should be for fs1 and then font weight will be for fw700 okay that's great so let's select the badge and the product content then badge the background color will be var c green 10 underscore 10 all right it's opacity color so max width will be max content We don't need to be set max with max content because this is already flexible layout so let's leave it and then color will be for c green and after that font weight for fw700 and add in for the top, top to bottom will be 4px and left to right will be 10px. And border radius will be for radius 6. Alright. There is this tile. Okay, let's take it from here. Okay. Then let's select the del this this one and it will be the color content and then color will be for cadet blue crayola blue crayola this is variable i provide all thing then font weight var f w500 500 and margin in line start that mean margin left should be auto let's take it from here and simply paste it okay so after that let's select the counter wrapper counter wrapper then this is the layout box you know then display will be flex and justify content should be space between and align item center Then background color will be var ghost white. Ghost white. Okay, then border radius will be var radius 10. And margin block end 15px. I spend margin bottom. So that we can create the gap between this. Okay. Let's copy this. And after that, let's select the counter BTN. This one. And color will be for C green and font size should be 18 px and padding will be 19 px. Okay, and then set the transition for transition one. 
for transition one okay let's take it all right so inside the counter btn here's the ion icon let's style them ion icon so the counter btn an ion icon struck with an icon struck with 18 px sorry 80 px 80 px so this is the ion icon custom variable for the stroke width let's take it okay let's give it hover effect on the counter btn is hover and focus oh. then color will be for shamrock green okay let's check it yes it's little change okay so after that let's select the data which is this one and okay let's select this one okay we need to add the class on this element so let's find it okay let's say dot span and color class and only the, let's say span yes here is the span then counter wrapper inside the counter wrapper dot span okay this one and color will be var very black very black and font weight should be fw700 all right so after that let's select the cart btn which is this one cart btn so this is the also the layout box so display will be flex and align items the center and justify content will be also center gap 15 px and width will be 100 percent and then background color will be var c green var c green so let's set the color will be var white and font weight will be 500 have w500 and padding will be 18 px and also border radius will be for radius 10 radius 10 and box shadow for shadow 2 shadow 2 okay very smooth shadow then select the set the transition var transition one okay let's copy from here all right 
and select the button icon I just mean an icon so card btn card btn and then an icon set the iron icon stroke with iron icon stroke with will be 50 px okay and now set the hover effect on the button is hover focus background color will be var shamrock green okay let's see what's change yes like this okay all right every every style is completed now we can implement the javascript from before the slider and also for this one cut quantity product quantity and the product price so comment out for the slider functionality so slider functionality and then declare a variable with the slider const slider and document dot query selector now we need to declare uh, we need to add data on the slider container which is this one so data slider and copy and then const next btn and also document dot query selector so let's find out this slider next to btn which is this one data next and for the brave one so const brave btn query selector and data brave so for the previous one brave okay then comment out for here so set the slider default position default position will be let slider pause by default it is zero and then set the number of total slider item items and const total slider items total slider items and let's check how much slider item we have one two three and four so it will be four so let's make this slider btn walkable so comment make next slide btn walkable and declare function const slide to next assign function and then slider pause which is this one Slide, slider pause increase by one and then slider dot style this is slider container so dot style and 
transform so let's add the template literals so we need to expression here in this in this string so translate x and here is the dollar sign minus sorry minus and dollar sign curly braces and here will be the slider pause pause and after that zero zero and then hundred percent so this is the slide to next function so then let's add event listener on the next btn add event on lm which is the function and here will be the next btn and type will be the click and even handler with the slide to next so as this illustrated so when i click on the next btn then it should be called slide to next btn right and after that slider pause will be increment by one and then here we are add styling on the slider which is transform and then translate x that's mean left to right translate and after that here will be the minus right that's mean minus and here will be the expression for the slider pause which is now is one and then zero zero which is which mean minus hundred percent right so let's check it in the browser let's copy from here and paste it all right you see yes that's great okay okay let's check it here yes let's walk in this is the style and it is successfully walk in you can see 200 and 300 all right now let's walkable for the brave btn so copy and paste so slide to brave and it would be the slide to brave and slider pause will be decrement and next btn should be brave btn and handler will be prev which is this one okay let's check yes it's working and here is the problem so we need to add limitation on our next and prev btn right so let's implement it, implement the function for the slider btn so check when slider is end, then what should slider btn do? btn do and function slider in end and then if slider pause that means slider position and this one okay is this one when slider pause is greater than or equal total slider items items minus one that's mean when you have uh four 
items it would be the three because we need to 300 translate for the visible last item right that's why okay then inside this and next btn next btn dot class list and add disabled this is the class and otherwise else next btn class list dot remove disabled so when we reach the 300 person translation right inside this style then on the time slider btn in the slider btn disable class will be added will be added right so there's call here slider rev and also in the slider next okay let's check it yes 100 and 200 300 then after the 300 it is now disabled right because in this button disable class is added already all right that's it okay let's add condition for the prev btn okay so here is copy and paste and here's the condition if slider pause less than or equal zero and then next prev btn sorry prev btn prev btn dot class list dot disable when at the zero and otherwise remove the disable plus okay let's check okay let's walk in yes the problem but the problem when we are start refresh our code or refresh our page it's not disable right but it should be disable for the first time otherwise you can think it's maybe another slide so let's implement this So because it needs to be called in the global execution context. So there's slider end. So that's it. So when you refresh the browser, it's already added, right? All right, that's it. Our slider is workable now. Let's move for the next. So let's comment out here product quantity functionality um, const total price lm document dot query selector and set the data on the total price lm so here is data total price so copy and after that const qty lm and document dot query selector so we need to set data on here so data qty and also copy uh, 
then const key to i minus btn and assign document dot query selector so this is the minus button so data key to i minus And then const ktui plus btn. And it should be the ktui plus. Okay. Then set the product default quantity product default quantity let qty assign one and then also need to be set the product default the default price price let product price which is 125 and then we need to set initial total price total price which is also total price 125 so then let's increment the function uh, const increase product quantity which is ktui assign function and here is the ktui which is this one and increment by one and then total price which is this one reassign qty and then product price so qty multiply by product price right okay and add the event listener on qty plus btn event on lm qty plus btn and listener will be the click and also handler will be increase product qty all right so let's make for the minus so decrease product qty so here will be the decrease decrease product qty and here will be the minus minus and then add even listener on the minus btn minus btn <laughs> all right minus and the plus let's check in the browser okay open the console and share the expression here ETY and another one is product price and third one is product total price okay so let's check it click on here yes ktui is now two and total price is 250 okay yes it's working So let's implement the DOM. So QTY should be here and total price should be here. All right. So inside the function on the increase product QTY. So QTY LM, which is this one, QTY LM, then dot text content 
and assign QTY. And then total price LM price LM dot text content and let's declare the template literals here and for the first dollar sign and second dollar sign and curly braces so here will the total price this one and after that dot zero zero all right let's see how it's work yes it's working all right so now let's add for the decrement okay it's working but problem is when we are decreasing more than zero it will be minus right so we need to set limitation on the decrement so let's see how so here if q2i greater than one okay it's work only when qty is greater than one then qty should be minus minus that's mean decrement right so let's see okay one two three four five six and three two one yes we can successfully add in the decrement limitation okay now make this page responsive okay and comment out for the responsive responsive for larger than 768px and declare the media media main width 768px and then here will be the reused style reused style and okay so select the container all the container mean header container and the product container all the container will be max width max width 400 px max width 400 px and margin inline auto so that we can center the all container all right so let's copy this and select the header container inside the header so header dot container this container will be max width 720px so here is the problem you can see here shadow is below the slider box so let's set the position relative on the header position relative and make sure you use z index will be one that's it let's copy and this style will be 154 right so search for 154 here okay and let's put the header container style copy 
and comment out for the header header all right that's it so then let's comment out for the product product and select the product which is this one and set the margin block start margin block start will be 45 px so copy and paste and then select the container of the product so product and container will be display grid and gap will be 20px like this so copy and paste it here and then product slides select the product slides container okay and inside this set the border radius var radius 15 okay like this and it's time to product banner so we need to select the product banner not the slider banner okay then max height max height and set okay and this okay for this screen everything is okay you can see here okay let's move on to the next screen okay so let's declare another media screen and here will be the 992 mean min width 992px and also let's comment out for the custom property custom property and root so first for the typography and let's move to the browser so fs Two, let's find FS2 for this screen FS2 will be 1.4 RAM so copy and then FS4 which is this one it will be 1.3 okay copy and paste so then comment out for the reuse style use the style and then select the container container And max with 950px 50px that's great like this copy and paste it here 
and comment out for the header header and let's select the header in the browser header so for the header add in will be add in block add in block 25 px and box shadow none copy from here then container inside the header so container max width will be 950 px and gap will be 60 px let's copy and then select the nav open btn and here's display will be none okay and select the nav bar and here will be all onset like this and display will be block so when you use or unset then display will inline that's why I use display block so let's copy and select the nav close btn right copy and here will be the also display none for the nav close btn so then select the nav bar list nav bar list and display is flex and gap will be 30 px Let's copy from here okay after that nav bar link which is this one nav bar link and add in block end that's mean add in bottom will be zero and color will be dark electric blue dark electric blue and then font weight will be var f w500 and also here will be the trans transition var transition one so let's take it from here and also let's hover effect on the nav bar link is hover and focus will be the color var eerie black Okay, like this and then select the profile btn and inside the profile btn dot img which is this one so profile btn 
Crypto.IMG. Set the width 50px. Like this. Okay, there's now comment out for the product. Product and select the product inside the main and product. So margin block, which is top to bottom margin. Top will be 75px and bottom will be 100px. Alright. Like this. Okay. Now select the product inside the product container. So, container of the product and then grid template columns 1FR, 1FR and align items will be center and then gap should be 90px. After that, select the product slides, product slides, and margin in line will be zero. Then select the product content, this one. Product content. Here will be the pad in zero. Pad in zero, like this. Okay. Now select the product title. This one. H1 dot product title. And inside the product title, we used FS1, right? This one. So we need to change only this FS1. So that's why FS1, FS1, 4.5 RAM to 4.5 RAM. Okay, like this. So then select the BTN group, this one, BTN group, and let's declare the display grid, display will be the grid and grid template columns, grid template columns should be 0.5 alpha and 1 alpha like this and align items will be center align items will be center and also gap will be 15 px that's great like this so after that i select the counter wrapper which is this one and here will be margin block end margin block end zero all right great we are successfully complete the project 
and congratulations. Now you know how to responsive from the mobile. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.